And I thought, okay, well, I'll make my own shoes. Why not? This is, this is the moment where I'm just <laughs> like, how do you even begin to start with the shoe? Right, tech lovers, we're lucky today because we're joined by Adam Hansen of Lotto Sadao. And well, he's a guy who I've not stalked specifically, but I'd be really interested in his career, particularly because he's an absolute tech lover. And well, a big thanks to him because, well, you're about to get ready to go on the team presentation here at the Tour Down Under, aren't you? So I don't want to don't keep you too long, but I, I do in a way because I want to pick your brains about so many things. So I've got a few questions here. Um, but firstly, What's your, back, what's your background in cycling for everybody watching? Um, well, I, well, in sport-wise, I did a lot of basketball, running, uh, triathlons, duathlons, uh, mountain biking, and then, um, yeah, I started, I wasn't very good at cycling in the triathlon scene, so I, I tried a year of cycling in Austria um, to improve my bike leg, and then um, from there, I, um, that's how I sort of came into the, the cycling side. Yeah. Now, were you always into sort of technology or, I, I guess a crude way of saying it is like do it yourself or DIY because when, when we look at some of the things which you've done in the past, you know, you, you're a great craftsman. Was that always something which you were sort of doing before you were cycling or did you always have a keen interest in it? Yeah, well, I used to love pulling things apart, seeing how things work. Uh... I bet your parents, I bet they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end they liked it because I fixed everything around yeah. the house. So that was good. Uh, but I, I was into software, so I was always, um, I was a programmer before as a cyclist, and I did a lot of valuation software. I worked, used to work for Her and Ted White Property Valuers in Australia. Um, so, and then from that I went into um, also real estate and renovations. I was buying flats, renovating them, and I did all the plastering, painting, um, wood floors, everything myself on um, that side. So um, as a, a do-it-yourself person, I was always into things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you managed to, I guess, carry that over into cycling because, well, on Weight Weenies, a forum, you know, that's where I first sort of heard about you really when I was reading your posts and everything like that. And then did you, I mean, you were able to just like transfer your, your love, I guess, for hand, handiwork into actually making your bike, well, unique to you, let's say. Oh, for sure. Like back in the uh, Weight Weenie days where, you know, we could do anything, use any, um, uh, bike equipment you want and the goal was to have the lightest bike you could get yeah. and I remember once I uh, jeweled out a Dura Ace rear derailleur, just put jewel holes all through it. Even There's the people at home crying now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd get the chain rings, I'd jewel them out also, um, anything to save weight, uh, use titanium bolts, um, even use plastic bolts where like in the bottle cages, um, yeah. I made my own bottle cages, um, lighter ones. Uh, I would try and you know like um, just even putting handlebar tape on don't put it too close to each other so yeah, really tight yeah, as yeah, well less, yeah. less of it so anything to make a bike lighter your cleats on your shoes I'm pretty sure they're quite far back aren't they yeah. and I remember once uh, racing against a guy I think from Switzerland and he showed me his shoes and he had drilled them in the center of, of the of the sole yep. and I asked him why I was like you know this, this guy must be must be crazy like, why would you do that and he said to me John, if you were going to kill a rat, how would you kill it? And I said, well, I don't know, with a trap. He said, no, no, with your foot. And I said, well, I'd, I'd, in the middle of my foot, I guess, because you wouldn't do it on your toe. You'd want to, and he said, yeah, that's where your power's coming from. From, And I was, yeah, I guess so. And then when I saw your shoes, which I was sure were in the middle, is that the same sort of thinking behind that, is that you can get more power from that part? Or? Well, it's a bit of both things. Um, first, you know, they say with the running foot, it's ideally to, you push most your power off the ball, your power off the ball of your foot, which is true. But in a cycling shoe, we have a rigid sole. Mm. And people forget that we really have a rigid sole in cycling. So this sort of defeats the purpose on that side. My theory on it is that the more weight you have over the crank, the easier it is. So to work out, um, Watts, for example, it is torque multiplied by the cadence, and that equals your watts. And when you when you first had an SRM, you had to calibrate them ages ago, and you did this formula. You had to put in the you should not off by heart years ago, but you had to put a five kilo weight, and you um, put in your crank length in the formula, and then works out uh, the slope number, and you had to enter that into the SRM, and then that work out your, your the, the crank power. Um, and for me, it was like okay, crank length is important. And if it wasn't, you, you wouldn't have to have it in the formula. Yeah. And it's like when you're taking a nut off a, and I always say this as an example, if you're going to take a nut off a wheel of a car and use a short spanner, it's super hard. 
but if you have a longer one, more reach, it's much easier. So with, with having your cleat further back, puts your foot more forwards and you're having more weight over the crank. So when you're standing up, it's super, well, I don't want to say it's super easy, but it's much easier when you're climbing. <laughs> you're laying on your seat, Chris. <laughs> it's much easier to apply the torque. So in low cadences, um, yeah, if you're more forwards, it's, uh, for me, I believe it's, it's much better. Yeah. Now, sticking then with cleats, I mean, this is the thing which amazes me because we've, we spoke off camera just now and while I'm a self-confessed lover of shoes, both you know normal shoes as well as cycling shoes, and your shoes, they blow me away. I've just picked them up and, well, I couldn't believe it. The cameraman, he couldn't believe it. He nearly passed over, not because of the heat, but because of the weight, because there is nothing to them. They are like, well, 70 grams a pair or something like that. So you hand make your own cycling shoes, which for many people out there, they'll be, they won't be able to believe it, but you do. What, what made you initially go down that route and, and why? Well, this goes back to the weight winning days where I always wanted to have a light bike. And I always wanted to have super light shoes. And uh, at the time I was riding DMT shoes and they had the three Velcro straps and this was really good. And then as shoes progressed, um, they started having a ratchet system. And I couldn't have the ratchet system because I have a bone sticking out of my foot here. Right. And that's where the ratchet system used to be. So I used to get pain. So it always had to be on the, the Velcro three straps. And that top model sort of died off. And then I sort of ran out of options what type of shoes I had. And I really like the DMTs because... They were DMT radial. I yeah. Think. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like them. I, I like really simple shoes. Yeah. 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 But anyway, sorry. And, but what people would also... You, you couldn't notice this. I used to gut them. I used to take, because there was a few layers on the inside, yeah. I used to take all the layers on the inside. All that, like, very soft padding. I yeah, guess. so yeah. I'd take all that out, and then um, with the sole, I'd change the inner sole also, and I'd, I think I lost maybe 40 or 50 grams just from the inside of the shoe, and you couldn't tell it. And I used to, when I pulled the straps over, anything that wasn't on the Velcro, I'd cut the straps short and everything to make them lighter, and I always just wanted a light shoe. Yeah. And then they stopped producing them, so I sort of uh, ran out of options then. And I thought, okay, well, I'll, make my own shoes why not this yeah. is this is the moment where i'm just like <laughs> how do you even begin to start with the shoe like well it I, wasn't I, it definitely was not easy yeah. um it was probably it took me i think uh three years and i'm not gonna say three solid years it was like okay well, I'll, I'll give it a go it can't be so hard and it was a lot of research and a lot of trial and error and the idea was just to make the sole and get someone else to make the top so and, and the other things I had, I had um, inner soles, and my inner soles were 120 grams each, so they're super heavy, yeah. just for the inner soles. Was that like orthotic ones? Yeah. Or was, yeah. yeah. And so my idea was, okay, I'm gonna make my soles based off my inner soles, so then I don't need them, yeah. and I save 120 grams there, and I just make the top. So I get someone else to make the top and fabric. And so I made, uh, made a mold of my foot, um, in my inner soles, so the shape of my foot is directly in the position it should be in yep. with, by the orthotics. And then from that, I, um, I use this wax over the top because when you use epoxy with um, um, plaster, it gets absorbed and then uh, you need a separator, so it's like a, a release agent, this, uh, this special wax that I use. And then I had, um, as you call it, like a plug of your foot. And then I made um, basically some flanges around it to make a mold from that. And I made, first I made the sole of a shoe. And I went to a, uh, someone to make the top and they took way too long to do this. Yeah. So I thought, okay, um, it can't be so difficult to make the top also. And um, the problem with carbon fiber is it's super stiff. And if, well, it's the epoxy. So I, I, I tested with um, different um, agents of resin and I could make the, the, the epoxy more flexible. So the top layer of my shoe, if you have a look, um, you actually see it here where there's a join here. Yeah. And this part of the, sh of the shoe here is actually flexible. So that's flexible. Yeah. It's actually really flexible. Yeah. And the sole is, um, as you feel here, it's hard as a, it's very stiff. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no movement right. in there, is there? And the way I got my shoes so light um, and if you look at a few examples like the Bond shoe, um, it's called the bathtub design. Yeah. Right, so the side walls uh, create the stiffness. So if you have a look here, I have this defined line here, and my sole goes all the way up there and goes around. So my sole actually goes over the top of my foot. Yeah. And that's where I get the extra stiffness. So by adding extra layers of carbon here, I can reduce the layers here. And you see the line here that comes through here. Yeah. 
So all the carbon is on the outside of the shoe. And then here, there's almost nothing. And you can actually push in there, like in a bike frame. You know when you yeah, push yeah. on top tubes? You don't need stiffness there, and you don't need stiffness there. And all the stiffness is through the side. Um, so that's how I get the stiffness and remaining it um, so light at the same time. So the top part uses different type of epoxy to the, the bottom part, and that's the flexible one. Um, this is the non-flexible one. And the other way is to make it lighter. I don't have the metal bolts. Yeah, that's right, you use some, is it, what's that, Kevlar, is that's, it? So that's Kevlar and carbon. So what I do is, I do have the metal bolts in there at the start, and then I make it set up, everything right, then I use a glue gun, and I um, glue it in place, I take the bolts out, and then I thread it with carbon and Kevlar, and then I put epoxy on there, and then it's fixed, and that stays on forever. Um, other things I did, I used to have a, a city system here. I remember that, yeah. Years ago, and then I went for a bowler system at the back, and now I do a 3D printed thing on my 3D printer where it just wraps around there. I have different knots, different just tensions there. Through. Yeah, so I just pull it through, hook it in, yeah. and I feed it through there. That was 2.7 grams. The bower system without the bolt and without the the, the, the bolt in the shoe was um, 11 and a half grams, and I think it was like 15 grams there. So I saved 12 grams just yeah. with that there. With this here, I saved 27 and a half grams. Um, and I just try everything possible to minimise the weight. Yeah, now were you, were you, did you have, before you were making your own shoes, were you putting cleats further back than... than yeah, so I re-drilled the shoes also. Yeah. Uh, like, um, but now I have them a little bit more forwards, uh, because when you have them further too far back, you do lose a lot of cadence. Yeah. Um, and if you have them too far forwards, okay, you lose a lot of torque, but you have um, uh, more flexible in the ankle. Well, I'm just trying to find a midpoint. And the strange thing is, if you look at cyclists today, a lot of cyclists have the cleats all the way back in their current shoes. Um, so everyone is going a bit further back. It's a bit easier. Um, it's a less stress on your Achilles also. And it's, it's just more safe if you're a bit unsure where you have your yeah. cleats. I used to actually do this, something similar to try and get a little bit further back using a speed play adapter and actually filing it out. And, yeah. Well, Dremel and yeah. yeah. You know where I'm coming from. Now, if, 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 if I said to you, and this is a dream, by the way. If I said to you, Adam, I'm going to come over. I want a pair of shoes. Imagine that, but 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 for yourself in seriousness. How long does it take you from start to finish? Be, now that you're, you know, you're up you're up to skills with it. Because the first pair was what three years you said. Um, so from to do all the molds and everything, it's about 14 days. Right. But once the molds are done, um, I can do it in five days, but it's only one hour work every day. So yeah. it's, you know, it's well, one yeah, hour there, got, you've got a job and then you've got to you. wait 24 hours for the cure, yeah. and it's another one hour job with the epoxy, and it's 24 hours to cure, so, um, yeah. yeah. Right, I've got another one then. Uh, stiffness of a sole, does that make a big difference to power output? Um, or is it, is, it, is it recordable, I guess? Because I remember, it's probably in my mind, I mean, us as cyclists, we, we spend a lot of time on our own, don't we, riding, and all sorts of things go through our mind. Oh, the soles are too stiff, my feet are hurting because of that, and I was wondering, you know, I always thought, oh, I'll get the stiffest sole possible because you're, gonna, you're not going to lose any power, and I just want to know your thoughts on that, you know, after making your own shoes, and I'm sure you've done For all sure. sorts of different soles. So, with mine, I always want the lightest, um, and sometimes I go too far and I can feel that they're too, they're too soft and I won't use them. So I definitely have some pairs, I have a training pair that are bulletproof where I feel confident I can throw it at the wall, it won't break. Yeah. Um, these ones uh, I race nationals with. These are eight months old, so they've done quite a lot of um, racing. Um, I get goosebumps if I drop it. Right. Because if I drop at the wrong point where the carbon's super thin, they will break. Yeah. Um, Stiffness with these, these are the borderlines. I would not make these any more uh, lighter than this. Yeah. Um, I do have a white pair that I use here on the sprint days, and they are, they are, they are stiffer. Um, not by much, um, not, not as much as, let me say it like this, these aren't, as, these aren't flexible enough not to use them, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So these, so these you're are You're not going to compromise your, your job on your bike, are you, oh, by having sure. something, no. you know? Yeah. I, I just, I still can't 
get over them. Well, they're yeah, I say they're light, and people are like, yeah, yeah, light, but when they pick them up, it's yeah. like it's paper. They, they genuinely are so light. And now I know that you're scared of them being dropped. I don't want to touch them because... <laughs> Actually, I don't like people touching them. Oh, really? Yeah, I have, um, I have a special I uh, really a case bad. to put them. No, no, it's, it's I, more... I feel, honestly, I feel awful now because I'm like, oh, let's no, have a look. No, 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 but sometimes I'll leave them there. I have teammates, they want to try them. Oh, right, okay, and yeah. And if you, you see it, it's really... Like, you see the ball in my foot here. Yeah. You see my bone sticking out here, like yeah. this part here. It's really for me. No one, like, yeah, exactly. people say, what size are you? I'm like, no, no, you're not yeah. trying them on. Like, come on. And I, like, I'll go to a photo shoot or something, come back, and I'll see some guy, like, trying to put his phone. I'm like, don't. No, stop. Uh, don't. It's, it's, um, no, it's not like that. Yeah. So, yeah, these ones are, like, in my suitcase, I've crushed a pair a few times. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so I, I have a special place in my suitcase that are made from fiberglass to put them in there, so it's, you know, they're, they're um, yeah. safe. And I, yeah, I always watch them, I always carry with them, I never leave them here, I always take them to a room. Because um, the the light ones are yeah they're very fragile. It's like a it's like an eggshell. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're incredible. Are you still are you still fixing your teammates bits and pieces as well as other riders? Because you're quite well known for that, aren't you? Sort of the go-to guy. Yeah, like, oh, the the, uh, the the TV doesn't work in the Bahrain Merida bus. Adam can fix yeah, it. Are you, still sure. the, yeah. are you still there? It's not, it's not the nicest thing sometimes. If someone breaks no, it. Exactly. Well, it's all right know, if it's nah. your team, but the others, it's like, oh no, I can't fix it. Sorry, <laughs> lads, you're going to have to be stuck with. Uh... Well, when someone breaks uh, the screen on their phone, they always say to me, can you fix the screen? Yeah, like, yeah, I've heard yeah, you could have yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Adam Blythe asked me if I can wrap some things because I, I wrap yeah. my shoes. I used to paint them. Um, now I wrap my shoes. So the white ones are wrapped now. Okay. Because they're wrapped because, well, first, um, when you put your shoe in, it opens this way and the paint used to crack. Yeah. So, and that used to always annoy me. So, I, I use car wraps. So all my shoes that you see that are white, it's just, I just wrap them. Yeah. And Adam heard I had some uh, wrap. He goes, hey, of course he did. How much yeah. wrap you got? <laughs> Can you make my shoes more white? I'm like, oh, I'm not getting told to this. <laughs> all he cares about. <laughs> yeah, so um, I did some wrapping on his shoes. Yeah. Um, yeah, if something goes wrong, it's or they can't work out and installing some application or the computer has a problem. Um, <laughs> I get the knock on the door. And, is the office open? Yes, <laughs> yes. the office is open. Yes, 3 a.m., come on. <laughs> Brilliant. Adam, thank you so much for your time. You know, I'm aware that you know, there's riders milling around behind us. When we started in here, it was quite empty, and now there's, uh, there's all sorts of people gathering around, ruining our beautiful shop. But no, thank you so much. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant, and I can't wait for us to sit down again and chat, because it's, it's always insightful, and I, I learn so much, and it just makes me want to pest you more and more and more about technical stuff. So there we are. Let us know your comments for Adam, because who knows, maybe in the future we'll be able to hook up again and you know, try not to take up too much of his time, but we want to know your questions. And also remember to like and share this video. Don't forget, check out the GCN shop. And well, we did a suitcase tour with you once upon a time, That's didn't right, we? Yeah. yeah, so if you want to check out that to see exactly what goes on <laughs> tour with Adam, it's amazing. It's, um, yeah, I'm not going to ruin the surprise actually. <laughs> Click just down here.